Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. This video is the beginning of section two of my um, introduction to the logic of argumentation, and um, section two is going to be pretty long-winded. We'll see how we'll see how sort of this unfolds. The idea is of the series, and it's not going to be a very long series. Uh, you know, I don't really anticipate it being you know as long as ten hours or so. But the idea of this series is to very methodically, very slowly, um, walk through five rules of inference. Um, from these five rules of inference, which are very, very basic, very, very simple rules of inference, we're going to use each part of the individual rule of inference, and we're going to slowly transform the logic, basically, into rhetoric. Right? Really, really good rhetoric, really, really really good speech, and thus, by direct implication, really good thought, since, you know, rhetoric is just a manifestation of thought. There's one of the ways in which thought is manifest. There is a, it's a really good way to condition the way in which you think. Not only is it a good, really good way to condition the way you think, it's a really good way to see, to assess and analyze how people think. The reasons for their justifications and the coherence of their argument and the the legitimacy of their rebuttals and refutes and critiques, right? The idea is, in this series, is to really put logic into motion, right? In most, if not all of my other series, it was, I would say, logic for the sake of logic, right? You can do a cool deduction. You can show your friends that you're smart because you know what, how to read this really complicated mathematical problem, or you can do the solution. I mean, that's all well and good. My, my, uh, my function in the world isn't to teach logic um, because I don't, I don't teach logic professionally. As I always say, anytime I do any logic video, take it with a grain of salt because I'm not a professional logician. Um, I have been formally trained in, in, um, in logic, but the idea is I went on to do other things with my life only to find out and only to realize that when it came time for me to write papers, when it comes time for me to write a book, when it comes time for me to analyze someone else's point or defend a stance, I always revert back to this. So what I decided to do, based on a prompt from a Facebook friend, Cynthia, shout out to her again, because none of this would have been possible without my interaction with her, um, is to give you, especially graduate students, right? This is geared for graduate students. I, I would not, I would not recommend anybody on the street, Joe Schmo, Jane Schmo, coming to watch a freaking what'll probably end up being, you know, eight to ten hour lecture series on me talking about. The logic of an argumentation. It's a rather boring series. It, it's it, I'm designing it to be boring. So if you're entertained, I'm doing something wrong, or maybe something's wrong with you. <laughs> you should not be entertained. <laughs> but but the the truth is right. The truth is for me is I I want to show. I want to demonstrate that it can be done. Once you see it in motion, once you see how it's done, once you recognize, wow, okay, I see how he did that. I see how he connected those points by watching me do it when I start the lecture, or by going through and methodically reading the notes that I have, and then, you know, comparing and contrasting what I say and what I've written, you'll be able, this is the whole point, right? And this is how I ended section one. You'll be able to do it yourself, right? So this isn't just about watching Dr. Campbell do what he does. This is about watching Dr. Campbell do what he does so that you can use this, right? Because this is a very, very powerful very powerful tool. Um, now granted, I, I don't expect a lot of people to make it all the way to the end of the series. I've, I've been doing this long enough to know that you get very high numbers of views at the first few videos and they dwindle. Um, with a video like this, it won't be as long as my Nietzsche series, so I would imagine that more people will complete it, but the idea is that, you know, I'm not here to make this, I'm not here to really make this entertaining. Right. This is this isn't this isn't a means of entertainment. This is a, a means of empowerment. So I'm going to have to go through this really methodically, really slowly, to make sure that the information is digestible. Because unlike a real classroom environment where you can pause it and have interactive feedback with the lecturer, I don't have this feedback with you. So I have to make sure that you know I approach the information from many different ways: visually, auditorily kinesthetically if you're writing it down, you know, you're looking at the notes so that, you know, my, my pedagogical, my pedagogical uh, mode is conducive to, you know, many different types of learning styles. So that's, 
that's where we are right now. That's enough of the chit chat and the prelude. Uh, so let's get to the dirty work, right? So this is a uh, introduction, intro to the logic of argumentation and the idea is in terms of the logic of argumentation specifically this is a demonstration that you can begin with the logic um, as I've said in section one as and as you'll see in the section two you can't see me construct these lecture series it takes me a, a tremendous amount of time to construct any one section of the lecture series because it, I know it, but I have to I have to be able to give you this information in a way that's um, intelligible and it's not an easy thing to pull off. So it takes a lot of time to construct the series. What ends up happening, and this is this is super critical, is that insofar as we're talking about the construction of argument, my point in this is to show that you can begin with the math. You can begin with the logic. We're taking very, very basic rules of inference. But if you're already able to do deductions, right? You can, you can, you can take a deduction that you've done, um, just for the sake of just doing sort of a symbolic dedu deduction, all the way until you get to the conclusion and you know it's a tight deduction, and then force yourself to translate that into language, right? The more you do this, the more you practice it, it, it will become second nature. I've been doing this for a very, very long time, right? I'm, I'm demonstrating this because I have to demonstrate it for purposes of education. But for me personally, I don't need, personally, I don't need, um, I don't need to have this now because I have the rules of inference plus more complicated rules in my head. When I hear someone talk, I can hear it. I can, in a sense, see it. And as I, 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 again, 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 not to belabor the point, but that this is, this is for me extremely important. And what I want to do is show you guys how to do it, right? That's the whole point. So, we begin, and this is section two. Disclaimer again, the system of um, argument formulation is of my own design, and thereby not affiliated with any quote-unquote approved systems of formal argument construction. It is an intuitive-based approach to logic. And that's the big thing, it's intuition. I want you to feel comfortable watching this series if you're the type of person. You have to be a certain type of person to watch a series like this, right? With each section that I do, I recognize that less of you will be still attending the, the watch, the, the, I guess, attending the lecture. Um, but for those of you who will make it all the way through, the idea is to garner from this that comfort in the fact that this is an intuitive model. Don't do what I do. Understand why I do what I do and find yourself in a position where you can adapt and create your own. There's a certain flexibility in this. I, that's the point, right? I want to communicate more than anything a certain flexibility to the approach of the application of um, these rules of inference. So we're going to use uh, modus tollens, right? right? We're going to use modus tollens. In the first section, we use modus ponens, right? And insofar as modus ponens was concerned, we said, if A, then B, if A, then B, A, therefore B. If I jump, I will fall. I jump, I fall. We took that simple concept. I thought about it in the preparation of my lecture series. How can I apply that very basic concept of modus ponens to the construction of argument, and I decided just completely whimsically to select water conservation. So we talked about, you know, water conservation has been in the news. I traveled overseas um, during the summer, and they were talking about the effects of drought and stuff, and air conditioning houses and stuff. So, I mean, water conservation is important. It seems like a really conscious thing to talk about. It's applicable to contemporary discourse. It'll be applicable to any discourse, anytime, right? Water conservation is always going to be important as long as there's human beings on the planet. So it makes this series basically relevant always. <laughs> the idea is after we, you know, after I slowly went through and showed you how to use and appropriate, appropriate modus ponens to the formulation of an argument, we recognize that the, the first we were able to generate maybe an initial power 